to achieve any level of success, you must first learn to control negative self-talk. In this video, we're looking at how you can stop negative self-talk. Something all of us are guilty of at the best of times, and something that, if left uncontrolled, can have devastating effects on you and your well being. Your inner dialogue is fundamental to how you see and perceive your place in the world, and unfortunately, for most of us, we often go through periods where we hold false beliefs about ourselves that holds us back in life. This might be as simple as saying, I'm not good at this thing, or I failed a class, education isn't for me. The problem is that in most of these cases, we hold these beliefs based on limited negative experiences, rather than focusing on objective reality. The problem is that researchers found that negative self-talk can have significant effects on your mental health, not least showing a correlation with depression and its long-term effects. Beyond depression, it can lead to limited self-beliefs, perfectionism, and even relationship issues, as the insecurities it builds can result in low confidence and even needy behaviour. However, there are ways to control and even stop negative self-talk, and they don't build false positive beliefs either, but rather they curb the behaviour and push you to take a more objective view of the thought or feeling. To begin, you want to learn to catch yourself. This is arguably the biggest challenge for many, but learning to identify and stopping yourself when you start to have negative thoughts is fundamental in preventing it from spiralling out of control. To do this, as soon as you notice you start to have negative thoughts, it's important to take a step back and reconsider some things. The first of which is to remind yourself that what you think or feel doesn't necessarily reflect reality. For example, we might think we're at fault when someone snaps at us, but often, what we don't know or what we don't see are of great importance here. For example, is the person having a hard day? Are they stressed from something else and ultimately just releasing the pressure built up within? These are important and valuable questions to be asking yourself, as well as did you really say something that they could or would have taken offence to? Sure enough, they might have had moments of frustration, but often most people learn how to control themselves and are only likely to snap when pushed too far. This process is to reflect on the situation objectively and consider the situation from all angles. Doing so helps you better understand the objective truth insofar as you can even potentially help and support that person who might have snapped as a result. It also goes back to what you believe. After all, you might initially believe that the person was angry at you, but as you view the situation objectively, the references that hold up that belief are taken away, meaning the belief is much less likely to be reality. The process is related to the next tip, which is to reframe your self-talk. We've already touched on this in the previous point about objectively reviewing your beliefs. However, reframing self-talk is equally valuable in shifting your perspective on something. Let's put it this way, many people are afraid to speak in front of an audience. The self-talk here can often be very much focused on the self, like what if I make a fool of myself, what if nobody likes my presentation, and even what if I lose respect. However, those who have achieved success in talking to an audience often shift from a self-focused perspective to shifting their thoughts onto what they can offer the audience. No longer is it about the negatives of what might happen to them, but rather it's about the opportunities in front of them to give something of value to their audience, something I try to focus on in my content. And on that note, if you're finding this of value, please do leave a like and help the algorithm know to push this out to a wider audience, and hopefully help other people. So getting back to the point here, reframing what you are doing here can have positive effects on how you perceive the circumstance. However, you can equally reframe a state. Simon Sinek once said that if you look at the biological reaction in times when you're nervous to when you're excited, you feel many of the same sensations. Your temperature rises, your heart rate increases, and you even start to sweat more. When you feel these sensations, you can reframe yourself talk from I'm feeling nervous to I'm actually excited. In doing so, you shift your mindset from a negative place to a positive one. And this leads us to the next tip, to shift language. Your language can have a massive effect on how you view the world. Numerous studies and research has found that language can have significant effects on people, especially when it comes to mental health. We've already briefly discussed this in the previous point, as we can understand how shifting perspective from being afraid to do something to being excited can help us go from being negative to being positive. However, this goes beyond that, as we're talking about your very fundamental core beliefs about yourself. 
just as self-talk can have negative effects and consequently make you build beliefs about what you can't do. Empowering self-talk can have the opposite effect, helping us build positive beliefs about ourselves in what we can do. This can have a dopaminergic effect in the brain to help us feel better about ourselves, similar to how we feel when we get praised by others. The key here is not to build up false positive beliefs, because as we've already established earlier, doing so can lead to that belief being broken down easily when reviewed. Instead, you want to build from tangible experiences to build up reference points to your belief. This leads us to the next tip, you need to focus on solutions. If you're going to build positive self beliefs, then the most effective way is to draw on positive experiences as references of what you're capable of. Doing this requires you to take action, which rather than focusing on thoughts or feelings, you need to focus on how you're going to do what you want to do, ergo the solution. Beyond this, providing a sense of objectivity in your thought process, focusing on the solution will actually help you activate the prefrontal cortex in the brain, the part of the brain that helps with creative problem solving. This is because you shift focus from hypotheticals to tangible elements you have control over. You can't control what might or might not happen, but you can control what action you take. And as you build up through this process of focusing on what you can control, you build confidence, even more so as you get successful experiences. This leads to belief in yourself about what you're capable of and allows you to change your negative self-talk to being much more positive.